Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn about the Prop Puppet Tool. And along the way we're going to learn how to recreate this cool looking scene you see in front of you right here with this mysterious floating cross. Um, little do you know, it's actually my mouse that's controlling this floating cross. Or it, it was before I recorded it. And uh, so that's basically what the Prop Puppet Tool is all about. So stick with this tutorial and we'll learn how to do that in two shakes of a lamb's tail. So let's get started first by starting a new project because we're going to build this from scratch. So let's go and start a new project here. You can press Control G to turn your grid on and off. If you're surprised that your grid is not on or not off, uh, press Control G to turn that on and off. Let's first of all add our character into our scene by going up to Avatar or Actor rather, not Avatar. And in my custom folder here, I have a uh, old uh, old dude that's from one of our developers, Toka Motion. You can see that uh, loaded in the screen right here. And let's first of all just give this guy a motion so he doesn't look like he's just standing there in a weird looking T pose. So I'm going to go give him an idle motion here under Mason and Idle in the motion uh, folder right there. And that'll do for our intents and purposes. And next let's focus on the lighting. So I'm going to press Control Shift P and that'll bring up my project settings here. And in project settings we have this section here for 2D background. Let's change the background color from a gray to something a little darker like a pitch black just to make it look a bit more ominous there. And then we can press Control G to get rid of that grid. So now it looks like he's just you know, standing off there in the middle of some dark environment, whatever kind of environment it is. We're going to stick with that. So let's focus now on the lighting. Uh, now, to, before I get into the lighting, I'm actually going to add my prop to my scene that I'm going to puppet. So to do that, I'm just going to go over to uh, props over here. And in props, in 3D blocks, you should all have this with the free version of iClone. I'm going to go down to find a cross right here. So I'll just double click on that, add it to my scene and use my W hotkey to move it along the uh, Y axis up here and then the R hotkey to just uh, scale it a little bit down. There we go. And you can use whatever prop you want. It doesn't have to be a cross. It can be a uh, boat or a capsule. All right, so let's just use this and let's give it a little bit of a glow effect just uh, for, for an extra little effect there. So let's go over to materials here into the glow channel. Just double click that and just load in one of your uh, iClone templates right there and this glow map will uh, Create a glow on that cross, and you can increase or decrease the amount of glow by using the string slider down here. All right, so now we have a glowing cross. Let's attach an actual light to this cross by going over to Create and Light, and I'm going to add a point light because that shines in all directions. You can see my point light right here. I can move it around. Um, it's not having much of an effect yet because we have other lights in our scene. So we can go to our Scene tab over here, and we can have a uh, rim light and a key light. Let's just press these two buttons here to deactivate both of those. And now we can see the effect of our uh, point light a little bit better. There you go. Ooh. All right, so let's align this to the cross. We can just go ahead and press the Align tool or Control L and click on the cross and then go X, Y, and Z. So now it's aligned to the middle of the cross there. You can align it to the pivot or the center. It's up to you. And then I'll press OK. Now what I want to do is make that point light invisible by clicking this invisibility uh, button over there. And then we can attach it to the cross just by going over here to our modify tab and attaching, pick parent, and we'll pick that cross. Now you'll see it'll become a child of the actual cross item. So now if we select this cross, we can move the cross around and the lighting will change um, with that as well. All right, now this is all we're going to do for this uh, at this point here. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Prop Puppet tool right now. So let's go into, uh, with our cross selected or any prop selected, let's go over here to the uh, Motion tab. And you have an option here, a tool called Prop Puppet. Let's just select that and bring our window over here a little bit. All right, so we have two little sections here. We have Simple and Advanced. It's actually quite simple. The Simple uh, section will just be Movement for Horizontal. If I select Horizontal Movement and I press Space to Preview, you can see I can move my cross horizontal. Actually, let's get this character to look at the cross just so we get a better example of uh, the movement. So let's select the character, go to movement, uh, rather go to the uh, edit tab over here and select look at, pick target, and pick the cross. Now our character will look at the cross there. We can choose more eye weight or head weight right there. So now his head will kind of follow along uh, where he's looking at. All right, so let's go back to the prop up tool there. Uh, sorry about that little aside there and click on the prop up a tool. So now we can move it horizontally and you can see with his head movement where we're going here. And uh, I can move it behind him like that, which, which is what I was doing. 
So we're basically moving it along the x and the y axes, which are represented by the red and the green arrows on the, on the bottom here. This is the world axis. So red represents x, green represents y, and blue represents z. Just keep that in mind, RGB, X, Y, Z. That's all how I always remember it. So that's horizontal movement. If I select vertical movement, I can move it up and down. So I can also move it along the X axis. You can see I can move from left to right, and I can move up to down, up and down, but I can't move behind him. So I'm just restricted to those two axes right there. So if you want something like this, you can uh, use those two axes right there. So that's the default uh, for these two. And if I want, I can press space and preview, and then if I press 1, I can change to horizontal movement. And you'll see that the 1 is indicated by the 1 in parentheses right here, and the 2 in parentheses will switch to vertical movement. So you can do this while you're, while you're previewing. So for example, if I'm, if I'm at horizontal movement right now, and I press space to preview, and I press 2, I can go up. And then I press 1, and I can no longer go up. I just go from side to side. And then if I press 3, I will begin to rotate. And 3 is the, in the, you can see the 3 in parentheses in the prop up at tool to the left. That will allow me to rotate. And then 4, I can scale like this. So I can go zoop and make it invisible pretty much. Make it a, a nice line and then just zoop, pop up like that. All right, so those are your, basically your uh, simple prop puppet tools. Uh, the different settings that you can use to uh, puppeteer or puppet your prop. Then we have the advanced section over here. So let's go over to advanced. And it looks a little bit intimidating, but it's actually not that bad. You can see over here we have limits. We have restrictions for movement, rotation, and scale. And we also have presets here that you can choose. For example, this one right here, if I select this one, notice that I don't have any movement or rotation, but I do have scale along the X and the Z axis. So the, the uh, red and the blue axis. So if I press space, I'll be able to go like this. You know, make a, a line like this and then just whoop, up pops across. So if you want to have a cool effect like that, you can just do that and whoop, up pops your cross. So you can use that for scaling. And this one right here, for example, you can rotate 45 degrees on the X and Y axes, and you can move uh, a thousand uh, units on the X and Y axis as well. Um, you won't be able to really notice that one. You can see it's slightly rotating. It'll move more than it rotates, obviously, because the movement values are higher. If we switch those up, say for example, 45 and uh, 45 on our movement, and then we put like, uh, what was it at? Like, we'll just put 200 or something for the rotation. Then if we preview, you can see now we get very little movement, but we get a lot more rotation. And you know you can go wild with all this stuff on your own time. There's just you know basically putting limits on each value that you want. Uh, this one right here, you, you know you can move 500 and rotate negative 40 degrees, uh, right, negative 45 degrees. Um, this one right here, for example, will only allow you to move on the X and Z axis. And this one right here, only along the X and Y axis. And this one here is only rotation along the Z axis. So I can do something like this, Z axis rotation like that. And if I wanted to, you know, say something, put a value like 20 right here, whoops, not 200, let's put a value of 20 on the Z axis. That one will rotate a lot slower. You can see my mouse is moving all the way across the screen, but it's only rotating 20 degrees in each direction. So with each uh, basically movement across the screen, it's only rotating 20 degrees on each angle. So just keep that in mind as well. So you can have tons of fun with that on your own time. Now you also have the ability to move, rotate, and scale along the local axis. So right here, like I mentioned before, this is the world axis, the red, green, and the blue. That's the world axis. Now, if I selected local axis right here, let's actually just close this down first. And let's rotate our cross slightly like this way. Okay, so it's kind of facing us this way. Now, if I press the W hotkey, notice that the movement gizmo is facing the same direction as my world axis right here. So red, uh, X axis going that way. So they're basically the same. However, if I press W again, Notice that the red arrow changes. Now this is the local axis. And if I go over here, this is the axis that's uh, set for my individual prop. So I can move it also along the X or along the local axis. So again, this would be moving it along the local axis right here. This would be moving it along the world axis. All right, so you can uh, go into the prop puppet tool again and you can change to the local axis. So 
If I wanted to scale it along the local axis, for example, let's choose that scale, and let's scale it along the local axis. Now, if I had that same angle right here, we wouldn't be able to see much because you know we're we're at the angle where we can't really see the x uh, scaling because the x is kind of facing us right there. So you can have fun with that on your own time. Just wanted to kind of show you, and you can always also reset everything back to zero and uh, whatnot. But let's just go ahead and try to record this now. So I'm going to go and just uh, press Control Z actually to uh, move this back to its original position. There we go. And let's have a little bit of fun with it. Let's actually add a particle effect as well. So let's go to the content tab over here and in uh, props, you can just uh, close down the props there by double clicking it. Let's go into particles. And you have all sorts of different particles that you can add like, you know, these effects, um, all sorts of funky um, you know, trails and everything like that in the effects folder. I'm going to go to this uh, atmosphere folder right here and just add this particle 02. So I'll just add that to my scene and then I'm going to align it to the cross. So same thing, align X, Y, and Z. So that aligns our particle effect to the cross there. And then we can go down and adjust the values. So for example, the life of the particle, we'll change it from 100 uh, to a uh, maximum value of 250. So this is how long the particle is going to appear on the screen. And we'll see what I mean in just a moment here. And then we can change the size. Uh, where's the size? There we go. Under particle key, we can change the size to like 100 by 100. And then most importantly, we need to attach it to the cross. So we can go up here and uh, attach to, big parent, and pick our cross right there. All right, so let's have a little bit of fun. Let's select that cross and let's go into the prop puppet. And now if we preview, uh, let's try and get a good angle here, like something mysterious like this. All right. Prop puppet, and let's just go to simple movement, horizontal movement, and preview. Now we have this particle. Oops, he's kind of going behind his head there. We have this particle behind the cross. And you can see I can, as I move around, the particles follow along. So you can create a really cool looking effect, and then just press the two button to you know, bring it up to something like that. Go up and down, press one from side to side. And you can have all sorts of fun with that. So let's go ahead and record that. Uh, let's just press the record button and then press space. Let's do something like this. So he's looking over there, looking over here, and then two vertical movement up here. And then it's going up here and then one, and then it'll just zoom, go away like that. And you can see the light disappear slightly and then we get closer like this. All right, and then press space to end that. And let's close that down. Now, if we want to find out the uh, how we, what sort of data was recorded there, we can just press the F3 hotkey and go into, uh, if we have our prop selected, we can just go over here and select uh, object related tracks and that'll bring up our cross right there. We can close down this project track and uh, open up the animation track. And you can see now we have this, uh, if I hold Alt and scroll my mouse down, I can zoom out a little bit. We have this puppet clip right here. And this clip right here is the motion data that we just recorded. So if I press space to play, you can see this is the playback of the prop puppet that we just recorded. We have this mysterious looking cross floating around right there. Now the cool thing about having this in clip form is we can actually manipulate it. If we want it to go faster, we can change this to speed and we can make it a lot faster. So we can go like over here and we can just, now the movement that we created earlier will be a lot faster than it was before. Right, you can see it go over there and up there. And you can also just like any clip, you can break it. So if I only wanted this front part, if I wanted, to, if I wanted it to end, say right here, maybe something like that, I can right click here, break this, and I can take this other clip and move it over there. And now you can see that we have this movement right here. And then we'll stay still up until this point over here. And then zoop, then it'll start moving again. So that's what you can do. You can manipulate it all, the, all that you want in clip form. Let's just press Control Z a couple times here to undo all that. Now, if you wanted to save that motion to your actual prop, you can do that as well by clicking and dragging in the Collect Clip Track and then right clicking here and selecting Add to Perform. And let's call it uh, Movement, I guess, for lack of a better word, and uh, press OK. Now that, that movement, that motion clip is saved into our props right click perform menu. So if I delete this clip right here, now we have no motion, absolutely no motion on our prop. But if I right click it and I select uh, perform, we have this movement command. And now we'll begin to 
move it around. And that's the motion that we just recorded earlier. So we get this kind of cool looking, um, you know, effect like that. And if we press space, if we press space, keep this in mind, it will stop the clip. It'll cut off the clip exactly when you press space uh, with your right-click perform menu. So you'll have to wait until the entire thing is finished and it will stop automatically and record the full clip. So let's just press Control Z here and undo that. If you go back to the beginning here, right click and perform uh, movement right here. So if we don't press anything, then the entire motion will uh, will be put onto our scene here and then we'll be able to see the entire thing uh, after it's finished recording. So there we go. Okay, so it was about 650 frames. All right, so that's about all there is to learn about the Prop Puppet tool. Uh, mostly it's just about experimenting uh, by yourself and manipulating the clips in whatever way you see fit and, you know, creating cool scenarios like this with particle effects or, uh, you know, various things. We'll have another tutorial on uh, Prop Puppet where we'll, where we'll focus more on uh, camera movement and using the Prop Puppet tool to move your camera so you can move your camera in really cool and interesting ways. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you next time.